mathematics is known as the language of physics so if you'd like to understand or apply your physics concept in solving problems then we should have a very good knowledge about mathematics so that's why as an introduction topic to physics we are taking basic mathematics now in basic mathematics many uh, topics are there but the main two important topics which are known as nothing but uh, differentiation and integration which is basically the part of calculus and in calculus it is related to mathematics for variables relations and expressions which are used for various physical quantities in physics in calculus two main operations are differentiation and integration but you are having this topic differentiation and integration only in your 12th class but for solving questions related to physics we required in 11th class also we required this concept of differentiation and integration so on the basic maths we'll discuss about these two part what do you mean by differentiation what is integration and how will differentiate a function or how will integrate a function so basically we are going to discuss about differentiation and integration so the first part we'll discuss about this differentiation now if i am directly uh, start explaining you about the differentiation of some mathematical functions you will not be able to understand what basically we are doing so i'll take a physical example for it then i think you might be able to understand what basically we are doing so i'm taking an example that everyone might be studied in your 6th uh, class or 7th class when the first time you start learning about the area or area of an irregular shape so we know that if it is an area of rectangle we'll go for length into breadth if it is an area of a triangle we'll go for half into base into height but if you are uh, would like to find out the area of an irregular shape which is same as like uh, let's say the area of a leaf over here so you might be remembering that to calculate the area of an irregular shape object first we have to plot it on a graph then we'll count that let's say uh, in a graph paper so if you are assuming that one square is representing let's say one centimeter square or something its area is equal to let's say one centimeter square then we'll count the number of such squares and in general what we'll do is whatever may be the squares which are completely inside we'll count it as nothing but one and like uh, a square over here you can observe that some part is outside so if it is more than 50% in general we'll count it as nothing but one so we are not taking the exact value we are taking an approximation like over here we can write 1 meter 1 cm square area is there here also 1 cm area is there but uh, for this 5 some portion is uh, basically outside but with most of the portion or more than 50% is inside the area so we'll approximately count it as nothing but 1 and in a region something like this over here you can observe that the area of leaf which is inside that square is less than 50% so we will not count it we will neglect it so then we'll add all these areas which we counted as nothing but 1 then we'll get some particular area but here we know that there is some approximation so we are not going to get an exact value but approximately we say that okay this is going to be the area of that so over here we are getting an approximate value because we neglected some part or we consider some extra part also but if you like to increase your measurement accuracy means the part that we are neglecting if it is very less then we'll get a more accurate value so for that purpose if you are further dividing instead of considering a uh, square of size 1 cm square suppose if i am dividing this one into further let's say 100 equal parts so if you are dividing this 
entire graph into some hundred more equal parts so we can observe that over here the part that we are going to eliminate will be very small like we'll count this part will not uh, will count this part and we'll count this part and we may neglect this small portion so the part that we are neglecting will be very less so we'll get a more accurate value if you'd like to again get a more accurate value so we can assume that if i am further dividing this one into small parts so we can say that the part that we are neglecting will be very less or we'll get an exact value of its area so if you are dividing this into uh, let's say 100 parts then we are then we are calculating the value of area that accuracy will be less as compared to if you are dividing this one into 1000 parts or if you are dividing this one into 1 lakh part our measurement accuracy will increase if you are dividing into 1 crore part the value of our measurement accuracy will increase again so like that if you are dividing this one into 10 crore part so our, our measurement accuracy will be very high and if you assume that if you are dividing this one into infinite number of small parts then our answer will be exactly correct the part that we are neglecting will be very 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 small so this is the the splitting process this division process is known as nothing but a differentiation and for getting the final area we have to add all these part means the number of parts whatever the, we are getting we are counting we should add it again that addition process is known as nothing but integration so this is the basic physical meaning of differentiation and integration so just remember that this differentiation this differentiation is a splitting process this differentiation is a splitting process and i think now you understood why we are splitting it we are splitting it because we would like to get a more accurate value and we are sp not splitting it into two parts or three parts or four parts or 100 parts or one lakh part or 10 one crore part we are dividing this one into infinite number of small parts so that each small part will be very 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 small such a small part or a such a small change is not something but a differential change so whenever we are using the word let's say change then it may be from 100 to 200 that change may be very high but if you are talking about a differential change it is something like from 100 to 100 point zero 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 one such a small change or such a small number of divisions is known as nothing but a differentiation or which is basically nothing but a splitting process and we discuss that after splitting it if you'd like to get the final area then we have to add it so this integration is basically a reverse process where in differentiation we are dividing or splitting but in case of integration we are adding it so integration is an addition process and differentiation is nothing but a splitting process so just remember about what exactly we are doing this differentiation and why we are doing a differentiation we are do we are splitting into infinite number of small parts so that is known as nothing but differentiation and we are dividing into infinite number of small parts for getting a more accurate value and after splitting we need to add all the parts for getting the final answer that addition process is known as something but integration so integration is basically a reverse process of differentiation so in the next part we'll discuss how to differentiate now we took an example for a physical case now we'll discuss mathematically how we can differentiate and mathematically how we can integrate it so if you are unable to understand what is differentiation and integration in the first stretch please try to revise this topic or listen to this video one or two times so that i think you will be able to understand what exactly differentiation and integration and if you like my videos please like this share with your friends and comment on the comment box if you are having any suggestions thank you